How hard was it to let go of a bad idea? You discovered that this thing, as you said, didn't have deep roots, didn't branch off into interesting directions. Is there anything else that it takes to recognize a bad idea? And how hard is it to let go? Because it can feel like, okay, now what? If you let go of something. Why? Well, I worked at Saturday Night Live for so long that it's like almost relief to throw something out. I mean, we would throw things out constantly and just go, okay, well, maybe it's this, you know, well, maybe that's not even the idea, it's this over here. And, and um, I, I, it, it, to me, it's just instinctual, you know. If you give it some time, that's the big thing, too. If you give it time and then you come back to it. So Alec and I were meeting like once a week. And then maybe one of us couldn't meet, you know, it was like two weeks had gone by and you sit down in front of something and you just kind of go, I don't know, man, what, what, is, what are we doing here? You know, and if you have that feeling, you should give it a shot for that idea, but, you know, try to move on to something else just to get it, it, it inspired, you know? I think yeah. nothing can beat just being inspired and this, and this idea just would keep, that's why I was saying earlier, just kept inspiring things where, the other idea just became kind of a circle of like, the guy tries this and then he fucks it up. And now next episode he's doing this thing and he fucks it up. And then, you know, and it was just kind of the same thing over and over. Yeah, it's always interesting to me when you get scripts from people who it's their first script and they ask you to read it. And you say, well, I feel like you could probably cut like this third of it. And people get very defensive about that because you're telling them to cut a third of everything they've ever written. <laughs> yeah. And they get very, but no, I worked hard on that. And, I, well, and you go, yeah, there's, there's okay, no other third. Then, then keep it. But one of the benefits of having done this over and over and over and over again is you get to a point where like, like he said, it's almost relief in a way to throw things away sometimes because you're like, how am I going to make this work? How am I going to, oh, you know what? I don't, I'm just going to get rid of it and, and start over. Your darlings right. is, is yeah. uh, great. Yeah, yeah I, I love mean, it. I've done, you know, we've done several table reads of Silicon Valley episodes where you, after the table read, you go, it's going to be more work to make that episode that we just spent six weeks on actually a great episode than it would be to throw it away and start over. Yeah, you, you have to keep doing it. I mean, you just, I mean, out, we're writing season two of Barry right now, and Alec was on a much deserved vacation for two weeks, and he just came back, and we were just talking back there where, I'm like, episodes one through four have radically changed. <laughs> so we got to have lunch after this because <laughs> I got to walk you through what I think we did. And, and then he might come in and go, wait, why did we do? Well, you know, and it's, you just, it, it, writing is really hard and it's problem solving. But I feel like if you're just, you keep kind of, it's this nice Venn diagram of like logic, emotion, and just your gut you know, of what something would, if something works, you know, and you're just constantly applying those things. But if it's getting better and you kind of go, I think we got it, you know, it feels good, you know, that's great. But then I'll tell you what will happen is then a month later you go, that thing that we, we thought we had it, we got a better version of that because now it's, you know, this, this, and this, you know. Like, um, I'm trying to think of an example in the show where we kind of threw something out. Well, we had a whole, and we may use it, so I don't want to say what it <laughs> what it was, but uh, there was a whole ending of the season that we oh, were writing right. toward for the first two-thirds of the writing process, and then at one point, two-thirds of the way through, we kept trying to get to yeah. that thing, and it was like the stories kept wanting to take us Yeah, the story wanted to go else. over there, and we were like, we're no, like, no, 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 we're writing over there. And the story is going, no, dudes, you have no control over this anymore. <laughs> we're going over there. And it's true, you know, like, um, if you haven't seen the show, uh, there's, a, there's an episode where my character gives Sarah Goldberg's character a laptop. And, and uh, that's a perfect example of Alec and I were, we were writing this and we go, oh, and he, you know, her laptop's broken, so he gives her a laptop and they've, they've hooked up once. And the next time they see each other, he's like, hey, I got you a laptop. And all the um, w women, the female writers in the room and also our writers, PA, <laughs> women went, that's creepy. <laughs> And we did said, you not, no, did you it's not a, know it was creepy at first. Yeah, they're like, that's super creepy. And Alec and I were like, I think it's a nice. Why is that not nice? And they're like, that is so fucking creepy. 
And we went, okay, then it's creepy. Okay, well now, okay, so she doesn't like the laptop, you know? And then suddenly you went, whoa, well, they just got together in episode three, and so episode four, it falls apart. Oh, this is kind of interesting, actually. And then you kind of look at it, and you see how that maps out, and you go, okay, that's just honest. That's just following the honesty of the thing. What if, what if it is creepy? Then what? Then it's, then what? And then oh, you go, oh, okay. he's creepy. She thinks this, but then that. Oh, that's really cool, you know? And then you, you follow that instead of going, no, my outline says he gives her a laptop and she fucking loves it because it's a rad present. <laughs> and she just needs to just recognize when someone's being cool to her, okay? And, and that's what's going to happen, you know? And, and you got to, you know, you got to listen to that stuff and, and be, you know, flexible, you know? And, and a lot of times cool things will happen out of that. And I, I think we both have advantages in the sort of the way that we've learned to do this, him being at, at SNL and being an improv performer where there is no scene until you listen to what somebody else says and heighten that and, and explore that. And my entire career, I've written with partners. So I didn't have sole ownership of the process and I was not able to sit in a room and just decide what it was. I always had to negotiate and I always had to listen to other voices and I think that's really helped me and I think it's helped us work yeah. together because we're both... Well, you know, never I think it might be this. What do you think? As opposed to, here's what it is, and I don't give a shit what you think. We're doing that. Yeah, and I've worked with people like that, and that's hard. <laughs> As an actor, too, you know, when you go, but why would my character do this? And they go, because it said so in the script. And you go, yeah, no. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just have a discussion? No. All right. That was fun. 